Yeah, there was a, a tzaddik, the Kanlonim is Kamal Shapiro, was the Rebbe from Pisetsne, which is a little town outside of Poland. A big Rebbe. He was, uh, he was the Rebbe who was in the Warsaw Ghetto. And he was killed in the, in the war, in the Holocaust. His whole family wiped out. He has a nephew in Israel carrying on the, the dynasty. But uh, he come, came from a very illustrious uh, line going back to the Magad of Kozhnitz. And when he was 40 years old, you know, he wrote in his journal, his, talking about, you know, things he was thinking about in his life. He said, you know, and he was a rabbi already. Not only was he a rabbi, he was a rabbi, he was, had many students who always went out of his way to say that the greatest thing in the world, we have people who live up to these words, maybe never heard of the, the P.S.S. Nerebbe, but the greatest thing in the world is to, to do a favor for someone else. It's the biggest thing in the world. And he said, when he was 40 years old, he wrote in his journal, probably a private journal, he didn't want anyone else to see. He said, you know what, I'm, I'm deciding that at this point in my life, I'm ready to convert to Judaism. Think about what that means. Lived his whole life a Jew. Now he's a rabbi, he's a tzaddik. Ready to convert to Judaism. In this week's parsha, in Parsha's Bahar, it says, Gerim v'teishavim atemi modi. I'm talking about why the land is not sold forever. It always goes back in the Jubilee year, back to the original owners. God says to us, Hashem says, you are strangers and residents with me. And the word stranger means also a convert. So the Degomach Nefrayim, the grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, he's buried together with the Baal Shem Tov there in Mezhbuj, the Rebbe from the Sadukov. He said that, what does it mean, Gerim v'teshavim atemi modi? That you are stra- you're, you're Gerim with me, you're, you're, you're converts, every Jew is a convert, what does it mean? He says, that it says in the in the Tilim, in the Psalms, King David, David the Melech says, I'm a stranger or a convert in the world, in the land. Don't hide your commandments, don't hide your mitzvahs from me. What does it mean? I remember when I was in Yeshiva, there was a, a Bacher, one of the few who went with the Hasidic garb, one of the students in Yeshiva in, in Israel, and he was very close to Talmud of a Rebbe, Kerstir Rebbe in Williamsburg to, to the point where he was basically part of his household he was adopted by him and we had no idea uh, the, the Kerstir Rebbe from Williamsburg, his nephew was the Kerstir Rebbe in Miami and he told me when he saw this young man, Ruvain he said uh, he looks just like uh, oh, I, shouldn't put this, I shouldn't say all the things whatever it is he looks just like, like his uncle he looks just like the Rebbe and um, all right, so it's not about Ruvain, about someone else, whatever it is. I know sometimes there's such a thing that a convert doesn't tell everyone else he's a convert, but the other converts he tells. Such a thing in the world. I remember when my wife converted, I met a rabbi who was a, a convert. He was, I think, he was a Catholic priest who converted to Judaism from Mexico. And we happened to run into him, she just converted, and I saw her that day to congratulate her, even though we weren't engaged, we weren't even going out, but I knew who she was, and I, was a, you know, big simcha, big joy, and uh, we ran into this rabbi, and he said, and I said, oh, this, this girl, she just converted, right, right, this, like a, an hour ago, he said, you don't have to tell everyone it's a convert, you know, people don't like to talk about it. And even if they do, some people want to tell the story, some people don't. Everyone has their own way. But uh, some people, they, a convert sometimes feels he has no one he can relate to. Someone who's born Jewish, he can't fully relate to because he doesn't have that in common with him. And someone who's not Jewish, he's, not, he's Jewish now, he's, so he doesn't feel he's not here, he's not there. But when he meets another convert, he feels that this is someone he can really relate to 100% more than anyone else because they're, they're, they're brother or sister 
not to say, now there's a big mitzvah to love the convert. In addition to the mitzvah to love every Jew, is an extra mitzvah more than anything else in the Torah. It always says to love the to love the stranger. But still, they feel alienated from everyone else. So King David said to God, "You know, I'm a stranger in this world. This I'm in the world, but not of the world. And we know how the world." relates to God, it's not always the most positive thing. People not always living up to what it's supposed to be. We, we walk around, God gave us a Torah, He told us the best way to live. We don't live up to it. So God's a little bit of stranger in this world. Meaning He made the whole thing, He's here, He's everywhere. And yet people ignore Him. People, right in His presence, deny His existence. There's such a thing as atheism in the world. So God's a stranger in this world. So a convert will tell all his secrets to another convert. A stranger will tell all his secrets to another stranger. Someone has something in common. And King David said, just like you're a stranger in this world, God, I'm also a stranger in this world. Don't hide anything from me. We're together. We, we're on the same page. And so the Degel Mach Nefraim said, that's what it means. You're strangers and residents with me. That when you're with God... We're, we're in the world, but not of the world. But we're also of the world, but not in the world. We have it all going on. Because we are, we're strangers, but we're also residents. We live here also. And everything we do in the world, like I said from the, from the Pizetz Nerev, you know, the biggest thing is, is to do a favor for someone else. It's not just a favor you do. It's a holy, divine devotion to God that we do. It's a mitzvah. And a mitzvah is more than a commandment. It's related to the word, L'tzavos, it's a connection. Every mitzvah we do, we're connecting to God. We're connecting to the light, the infinite light of God, show, shining His light in this world, unifying the world, showing that when we, it looks like in the world, God's not here, we're bringing His light into the world. That which He has hidden to give us the opportunity in order to make the decisions to follow Him and earn the reward that we get for overcoming that obstacle, that's what we accomplish. We're demonstrating the unity of God in this world. And for that, God loves us tremendously. Because we have so much in common with Him. He's in the world, but not of the world. He's despised, despite the fact that He is responsible for everything. And so too, now, Baruch Hashem, we, 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 it's not so bad, but self called self, the Jewish people have had it tough in history. Even though, you know, they said when they, it says in the Talmud that when the temple was destroyed, if the heathens who destroyed the temple would have known what a benefit it was for them, they would have set up guards to protect it rather than destroy it. But really, it wasn't they who destroyed it, we destroyed it with our sins. You know, it says in the Talmud that any generation which the temple was not rebuilt, it's as if it was destroyed in that generation. It's a very sad thing. The Ismach Moshe, who was the founder of the dynasty that's now Satmar, he was crying when he was learning that Gemara and Tainus, and his son Reblezenissen uh, Reble from Drabish, he said, Tata, didn't you teach us that when you... When when uh, the temple was destroyed, we were forgiven for our sins because God took out His anger on stones and wood instead of t on the people. And so, therefore, the generation that we're not having the temple rebuilt, as sad the sadness that we feel that we're lacking the greatness that the temple, the glory that the temple had, provides us with the same forgiveness of sin as the generation that lost it. So that relieved him from that. In the second part, we read two parshas this week. So we read about one of the scariest parts of the whole Torah, the Tochacha, the admonition, which talks about all the horrors that would happen after the Temple was destroyed. If we didn't follow, if we didn't walk in the ways of the Torah, all the horrible things that we would have to face. And yet, in the midst of that, every word of the Torah is really love. And as scary as that is, there's a message of love in there. It says, that Even though they find themselves in the land of their enemies, I will not despise them, I will not find them disgusting. To destroy them from 
off the face of the earth. The Holy Zohar, in the Holy Zohar, Rabbi Chia asks, what is this talking about? Why does it say, I will not find them disgusting, I will not despise them? It should say, I will not smite them, I will not kill them. What does it mean? So Rabbi Lazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon Yechoi, we just celebrated his halula. He said, it means that that's how much God loves us. Meaning, there's a man that is in love with a woman. But where does she live? She lives where they tan leather. You know what they use to tan leather? They use excrement. To, it, maybe not now, they have different chemicals. Whatever it is, it stinks. <laughs> it stinks. It's the worst smelling place to the point where the Talmud tells us that when every Jewish man was obligated to make a pilgrimage to the temple on the holidays, and the three pilgrimage holidays of the coming up to Shavuos, and on Sukkot and, and Pesach also, so not everyone was obligated. So there's a, a thought that someone who works as a leather tanner is not obligated because he stinks, and he can't go. And the end of Talmud there in Chagiga says that he could go, but he has to clean up, and he can't, he, go, he can't go stinking, but he could still go. But there was a thought, maybe he couldn't go because because he smells so bad. So this man, who's in love with this woman, if she wasn't there, he would never go there. But because she's there, and because he loves her so much, it's like the most beautiful smelling spices and perfumes in the world. And so, uh, Belazer said there in the Zohar, that's how we find ourselves in, whatever impurity we're mired in, we're in the land of our enemies, whether they're physical enemies, or much worse, the, the, the spiritual enemies that we are facing in this generation, which are maybe worse than the physical enemies, the ones that not kill the body, but kill the soul. Now, despite that, despite the fact that we find ourselves in such a horrible place, God just loves us so much, it says in Chagig in the end, that even the biggest sinner of the Jews is filled with mitzvahs like a pomegranate is filled with seeds. And so the fires of hell have no power over a Jew because of the mitzvahs that we do protect us. So therefore, God loves, wherever we find, He will not find it disgusting. He will not, he will not find it, you know, defiled. It will not, every place we go, is a beautiful, sweet-smelling, lovely place in the eyes of God. Because a Jew is there who does mitzvahs. He, he goes back, he puts on his tefillin, he, he, he says a bracha, he comes to shul, he helps someone else, he gives a little charity. He doesn't have anything, and he takes a little bit of what he has, a few pennies, puts in the pushke. He goes and helps someone else, volunteering in the community, doing good deeds. It's so sweet, it's so nice, because it connects us up to God. And so therefore, and then Rabbi Chia said, just to hear that, it would have been worth it to hear that. That's what a beautiful idea. And that word, it says, It's we're God's bride. But we're more than that. We have things in common with God that no one else has. Because we are there, we're together with Him, and that just as He's separate from the world, but sustains the world, in the world, of the world, surrounds all worlds, fills all worlds, and yet the whole world doesn't care you know, even even those of us who are religious, we, we don't live up to what we're supposed to do. So what, what do we expect? What, but still, in our hearts, there's that point that can never be disgusting, never be found. It's filled with love because we are still together with God. And that's what it says, Ge'ula titna la'aretz. Why? It says you should bring redemption to the land. Also, where it says you're strangers and, and, and sojourners, but also residents with me, it says you should bring redemption to the land. We have to know how much God loves us. You know, Shlomo Karlbach would always quote from Alexander Rebbe that more than you have to tell people that you have to believe in God, you have to tell them how much God believes in them. That's what it says in, the Psalm, in Psalm 92. And your faith in the nights, or we say by Moda'ani, when Rabba Menasecha, how great is your faith? Who does God have faith in? God has faith in us. And we can do it. And so more than we have to know that, that to believe in God, we have to know that God believes in us. But also we can say more than we have to know to love God, we have to know that God loves us. The Baal Shem Tov says that one of the reasons why the exile is so long is because we don't have enough concentration when we say before Shema, have a Rabbah, have a Solom, the blessings that tell us how much God loves us. Why? Because it says in the... Um, 
in Parshas Dvarim that by the story of the spies that they said that because God hated us, that's why he took us out from Egypt. That was the mistake that they made. And that was the source of the whole exile is the mistaken thought that God hates us. We have to know that no matter what, the Baal Shem Tov says that even the biggest sinner God loves more than, than any human being could ever love his own child. Any, a, a father could love a son, a son could love a father. Uh, you take all the love that ever was in the world among human beings and it's nothing compared to the love that God has even for a wick, the most wicked person because we're all God's children. And so we have to meditate on how much God loves us. And through that, that brings the redemption. Because the thought that God hates us is what brought the exile, and what's brought all of, the, all of the sorrow, all of the trouble that we've not only experienced nationally, but in our own lives comes from this mistaken fallacy that God somehow doesn't love us. Just the opposite. God forbid. So therefore, when we meditate on how much God loves us, no matter what, that there's that... It's 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 an a It's an unconditional love that God has for us, because we're strangers and sojourners with Him. That through that we can be worthy to all to bring redemption to the world. And so I think that's what the the Pesach and the Rebbe was thinking, you know, when he says he wants to become a Jew, because it's such a wonderful thing. Even though he's Jewish already, you know, they asked. Uh, they asked the uh, Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zonenfeld why he was always running to the mikveh. He wasn't a Hasidic guy. He was, you know, he was a big rav. He, was, he wasn't. Why is he running to me? He went to mikveh a few times a day. And the rav of Yerushalayim said, if a if a mikveh can turn a, a non-Jew into a Jew, imagine what can do to a Jew. What's the mikveh mean in the haftarah from uh, this week? One of the haftarahs it says mikveh Yisrael Hashem. The word mikveh means hope. We have, to, we have to imbue ourselves with hope that no matter what, there is hope for any situation because we have a God who loves us and cares for us and believes in us and wants only the best for us. And so that's why he gave us a Torah to guide us. That the, the Torah is a love letter that God sent to us and we send back to him by keeping his Torah to the best of our ability and recognizing that sometimes we don't live up to it, not trying to justify, rather saying we're sinners, but even though we're sinners, God loves us. And through that we can be worthy. It doesn't matter. God loves us no matter what, as long as we think about how much He loves us. And then when we think about that, why would we want to do anything wrong? And that merit. And if we do, so we mess up, but we can get back on our feet and become a gear like a cut and canolad. We can become, we go to the mikveh and become new. And just like a newborn baby, boy, you know, newborn baby, we can be born again as Jews in the Torah, following the Torah, living the Torah life, and always getting back. The, the, uh, it says in the, in the, the King Solomon says that the righteous will fall seven times, so he gets back up again. Don't give up. We always can get back on that horse because we have a God who loves us and wants only the best for us, and we should be worthy to have, talk, have a gula titnu the arts, with the redemption that we're all waiting for, our personal redemptions and the national redemptions. Uh, with the coming of the real Mashiach, the king of the Hebrew, may not mean so. Okay.